So, ma'am, uh, you got your job at Intel after your M Tech, and uh, I believe you started as an intern intern there. It was a eleven month internship. Correct, correct. Yes, ma'am. So, how so was your experience? So, yes, internship was part of the curriculum itself. Like after my nine months in uh, VIT, I had uh, nine months left for my curriculum. So, that was part of uh, Intel internship. Okay. Internship was uh, good, I would say. Uh, definitely intel it's a big company right but unless and until you enter the campus you cannot really uh, <clears throat> feel the uh, vividness and uh, the huge campus that surrounds you 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 get very much baffled and you are uh, you are like uh, above everything you feel oh my god such a big campus and so many facilities uh, yes. 24/7 cafe machine 24/7 everything is there for you Uh, so it was uh, a lot to take, uh, but then we met our managers, then we met a team. Then slowly the uh, ramping up happens. You get a buddy, you get a mentor, buddy just to make sure comfortable that you you know in your internship yeah. if you need anything. You know he helps you with uh, getting in with all the on board, and then uh, mentor who then you know uh, yeah. tries to ramp you up on the. current intel processes and uh, some acronyms so intel is all of about acronyms everything goes with three words <clears throat> just as like we have fyi then uh, we have some bkms this that so uh, you know getting used to with all of this and uh, some uh, methodologies and flows also that intel custom flows are that right whatever we did in theory is theory but uh, when you are trying to uh, implement it in the industry there are some uh, some plus and minuses so you, uh, you need to understand that as well okay so, so i think first two months went in the ramp up okay so it was a uh, intel has a particular office culture which has words uh, lingos correct yeah <laughs> yes yeah there that is the thing uh, Uh, regarding your internship experience you were given projects uh, and what was those can you uh, please describe in brief yeah um projects in the sense of, uh, we were not working on the projects we were uh, see internship is like a part of a research and you have to build your thesis around it so hmm. you try to find uh, a problem statement and how uh, how are you using the intel tools and intel uh, libraries or intel um, uh, access right to overcome that tool and what are you doing differently uh, to overcome it so that is something uh, was part of the internship and was part of the thesis and yeah. um, to uh, briefly um, it's it's little confidential but uh, it's like uh, you are fine tuning something so it my uh, my uh, thesis was more on low power uh, ic design okay. uh, so low power uh, if you are aware there are certain cells uh, which are classified as low power and they are always used for uh, those low power designs like not every design is a low power design but some of the part of it is low power design so uh, so my project was mainly focused on that and uh, second was um uh, how on uh, mostly see uh, the thesis always happens on how you optimize four things power performance and area vlsi is all about power performance area and once you optimize all of this then you optimize on the cost yes so that is the factor deciding factor so once uh, so we'll say is all about uh, the space crunch right as soon as uh, you now we are talking in nanometers then now we are talking in armstrong which is uh, above nanometer design so how are you uh, tackling this uh, small small you know potholes will will which will start coming when there is crunches and everything congestion and everything so uh, we'll say is all about optimizing this and uh, trying to fit everything in the smallest space with billions and trillions of transistors in in one in yes. one small chip so your project so, was about uh, optimizing these three parameters uh, correct. through a correct. through a topic correct yes yes and ma'am so what was the tools that you get acquainted with in the process 
so um a while i was in vit uh, this is the um, second most <laughs> nicest thing about vit is the labs so uh, we were very well versed uh, acquainted with the flow and with the labs as well so i think we used uh, uh, synopsis tools apr flows and um, cadence so virtuoso is like you need virtuoso cadence if you are working on transistor level but uh, i think in my mtech i only uh, i was in icc2 flow synopsis only. synopsis apr flow and same translated into intel correct correct yeah, yeah. so uh, it's like uh see it's like every uh, uh, there are two types of industry in vlsi okay? okay one is product based second is eda based so eda means uh, your electronic uh, device automation tools who they build up the tools okay and <clears throat> product companies like intel amd and uh, other con qualcomm and everything so they bring up the product now to bring up a product you need the tools correct mm. you just cannot simply go and you know build a product like that no you need some uh, automation tools some back end tools uh, so synopsis cadence ansys siemens uh, these they these people they have tools so we cannot directly integrate that tool in uh, college labs or university labs is fine but in when you are doing on uh, any specific company level so every company uh, integrates that tools in a different way so we always have this vendor discussions as well with the with the vendor tools like right? our vendor companies so uh, definitely the flow was not uh, as simple as we learned in vlsi flow in the textbook it was there, there will be always a wrap around of intel around those tools customize flow but okay. uh, but it is uh, parallelly to the what the industry flow is there it's like okay. that got it ma'am so uh, uh, regarding talking about this you know uh, yeah we, we will cover this in the next part, in in the upcoming uh, talk i have this uh, good uh, suggestion on what to look forward for career in vlsi okay. so yeah and internship was all about all of this ma'am we we'll definitely come out... yes ma'am mm. we'll definitely we'll definitely come to that part and uh, regarding your after your internship experience uh, what role were you offered at intel oh yeah so now here comes the struggle part i was never offered a role directly because um, at that time intel's uh, uh, wi-fi business or 5g business did not work well so there were no hiring uh, hiring was freeze um, most of our uh, most of my friends from vl uh, vit they got uh, absorbed but there were people like me who were who work in a small business units so we did not got consumed but we were trying very hard uh, we were giving out interviews outside as well inside as well because what happens is when company like intel stop stops hiring right slowly 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 that reflects the entire market so at that time nobody was hiring Not even Qualcomm and Nvidia. This Very few. Twenty nineteen. Okay. I started my internship in twenty eighteen July, and uh, it ended in twenty nineteen June. Yes. No recession so is not. Was, an, recession no, is not. No. This session. This session was not there. Uh, I would say, but Intel is a. very core company right so if uh -huh. something up and down happens in intel it reflects the entire semiconductor market that is the impact so and we were part of that impact so uh, after my internship uh, uh, i was um, i was not doing nothing in two months like two months i was just searching giving out interviews trying out to reach to people that <clears throat> that was the time where i was most active on linkedin uh and uh, i was trying to reach out to hrs everybody everybody even uh, i had good network in intel when i when i was an intern so you know people were trying for me as well rooting for me and then after two months i got an full time offer from intel okay, so, so that you, was also you did an internship no, and then uh, after but you didn't convert it into an a full time offer no i then, i was uh, not offered in full time offer because there was no offer for me For my okay. for in my business unit which I was in. 
Okay, and then you prepared and looked for jobs, and I think again Intel I got you have got selected in Intel. Correct, correct. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. because while I was my end of in the tenure of my uh, end of my internship, I was interviewing within Intel also and outside also. So when uh, I had an interview with Intel, uh, end end of my internship, uh, but they did not get the results the same time. So it took them two months to you know get back to me so it was like that uh, okay ma'am so after you got hired what was the role that you got so my role was um uh, ip qa and release engineer so this is something people are not aware of because this is something it's not in the flow but this is uh something very important you have to do like ips are different from socs yes so Correct. IPs get integrated in SOC and that's how an SOCs are formed. Yes. And uh, when you are uh, designing an IP and integrating on a larger scale, so SOC is still a larger scale for IP, right? So there are a few uh, things you have to take care of from the collateral or from the quality aspect, what you are giving, right? So uh, my job was I was sitting on that frame between IP and SOC, like even before giving out an IP to the SOC, I have to make sure that the IP we are delivering to the customer, Intel, Intel, inside Intel customer, it has to be of the uh, highest quality, like no errors, no backlogs or no hacking, you know, the uh, flow should be seamless and smoothless, should be okay. like that. So that was my job when I was uh, integrated. So I saw in your profile that you were working in the I IP to SOC delivery part. And Correct. in this yeah. delivery, you were in the in between ensuring that whatever I IPs go to the SOC, they are of uh, good quality and working. Good capacity. quality. Yes. And everything is on point, on place. So that, you know, uh, why this is important, I will tell you. it uh, It is from the TTM. Time to market. Okay, yes, now, time to market for an IP or for a uh, product, real estate product, is usually 18-month cycle, TDM. Okay. It is, uh, if you are doing an 18-month, that means you are top of the market. <laughs> if you are not, then you're back of the market. So, uh, the time to market, if it is uh, reduced, right? I mean, if you are giving the right thing at the right time to the right people, there is no uh, back and forth conversation on that. Okay, <clears throat> you missed this, you missed that, or this is not of the right thing, this, that. So that time is saved. That is what our team used to do. We used to save that time so that when SOC integrates an IP, it should be smooth, it should be nice. And they are also, they also start working, right, <clears throat> with us parallelly. So their time is also saved like that. So you were ensuring that uh, deadlines are met. <clears throat> Mm, correct. Not only deadlines, but on that timeline, our IPs are delivered of the highest quality. Yes. That is that was my job. Got it. So this was the role of IP to SOC delivery. Uh, but after that, uh, you were promoted to analog IP engineer, which is your current role, I believe. Yes, that is after three years. I If you go through my resume again, right, you can see there is something called a signal integrity. I yes, hope you went to that column. Yes, so, yes, yeah. So, um, apparently, again, now time of interest. So, I was fine with it, but I was not okay with it. <laughs> so, that juggling was happening. And it happens. It happens to everybody. So, whenever it happens, something like that, so I started looking forward for some different opportunities within Intel. That was COVID time. And then I got an opportunity as a signal integrity engineer on motherboard. I think that is PCB. So yes. I went back to PCB. Okay. If you can see that very nicely. So this was a huge transition again. And in that transition also, there was a lot of learning. Signal integrity is a huge thing. Uh, like VLSI, but uh, not that well fabricated. Um, yes. I think you are in electronics. Yes, ma'am. You must have been from, uh, you, you You must have learned about single integrity, EMI, AMC. Yes, ma'am. I've heard about crosstalk terms. Uh, 
yeah uh, yeah cross talk we work with we i used to work in that domain only <clears throat> yes ma'am cross so talks and at, everything yes ma'am while at intel uh, you were in intel but uh, these are two different worlds uh, mm correct <laughs> so how yeah. this role happens uh, how this role shift happens uh, you your project shift happens if i am right the the thing is like the shift happened because um, maybe i was not happy with my uh, current role which i was doing um it was fine it was okay but not something that i wished for then i had two option i had two option either to uh, wander around ip associate different teams or go back to where i started I started as a PCB engineer, right? So PCB design, so ठीक है. But uh, if you go one step ahead, so Signal Integrity is even more better platform. Like you work on the actual um, Signal Integrity aspects of the of the board, right? Okay. So I had these two options. So I decided to go for go back again. Uh, so I spent three years over there. as a signal integrity engineer providing uh, signal integrity guidelines on crosstalk noise interference for on the other mother board motherboard but on all the intel for all the intel associates it's okay. like that so it was a different journey and uh, again there was a twist uh, 2023 was all about uh, you see that it, it was about actual recession in semiconductor because that was the uh, post impact of covid if you can see you know covid let yes. did impacted us in 2020 but not much it, it is the aftermath of covid that impacted us a lot in 2023 and 2023 were lot of announcement from intel you can hear lot of layoffs were happening sure. everything was happening so i was impacted in that layoff within that period so again there's a you know a, there's a downfall so i was impacted and uh, uh, i think september was my last day in, with intel again in that three months uh, like from june june i was uh, intimated that okay you have been affected you have been layoffed um so your last it will be september so from june to september those june like june july august september 3 months correct so for those 3 months um again i started from scratch so again i had two options either to continue into signal integrity or to go back to vlsi yes ma'am those were the two fields i was exploring and other fields as well but my main uh, focus was to get a job definitely yes, any any progression is fine because i have experience in both, both the things so uh i gave interviews lot of interviews i think i gave around 10 to 15 interviews in 3 months <laughs> that was a huge thing and yes, uh, also uh, interviews they don't come easily like for yes. first month i did not had any call but from august i got lot of calls and back to back interviews so um that was the time when i was rewiring myself and uh, after september i think of uh, september i think after even after september after two months i got call from mental that i have been offered as an analog circuit design engineer i was very happy <laughs> so i so uh, applied at linkedin uh no that uh, that also interview happened uh, during my notice period so okay. they did not inform me because even okay. they were not sure about the rec and all and after uh, the rec got confirmed they informed me that uh, yes so for that um, for that uh, um, seat i think i went through four round of interviews okay. and um, yeah so then in october i was informed that uh, i have the offer letter Yes, I had the offer letter by October, and, and I joined. Okay, so you were offered the role of an analog circuit design engineer. Correct, with yes. doing the QA as well, which was my very first RCG. I love after the uh, Intel conversion, right? I mean, internship, intern to uh, full time. So whatever the QA I had did, I told you, you right? IP to SOC, IP to SOC delivery. 
Yes, so ma'am. I had that experience. So on that experience, based on that experience, they hired me for analog circuit design so that I can implement the same thing over here along with doing the uh, uh, QA and uh, along with doing the circuit design and everything. Okay, ma'am. So I, 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 we explored your journey at Intel and you worked on multiple projects. So having done, mm -hmm. uh, worked on so many projects, uh, so what would you uh, advise a fresher? Like what is a must-have skill for a VLSI fresher looking for a job? So the must-have skills are automation skills. Perl, mm -hmm. Python. Perl too, it's fine, but uh, Python is very important. Python, Tickle. Uh, then knowing about... Um, Skills, if you ask me, programming skills is something I will, I would always, uh, you know, prefer having something, a uh, person who, with, who is having all of this knowledge. This is very important and very key. Second is uh, tool experience. Now, uh, if somebody is doing an internship, it's fine. But if somebody from BTEC is trying to uh, uh, rewire their career in VLSI, I would never suggest that ki you do BTEC and then do VLSI because that is something, uh, it's a long process. It's a very long process. The The time you take to go till there, uh, it's cut short by 50% when you do MTech, which is always preferable. And always cut short preferable. here means? Uh... Cut short in the sense when you go as in BTEC, right? the way the hierarchies right so you start with a uh, let's say there is a b c d e okay when you do b tech you start from a okay by the time you reach b it is it is like 3 to 4 years c again 3 to 4 years now if you do m tech Okay, you reach C or you are reaching B directly. Okay, the basics uh, has to be uh, taken care of. Yes, and not only basic, but the hiring, hiring level, grade level. There's always something yeah. as a grade level. Yeah. So that makes a lot of difference. So when you come as a BTEC fresher and when you come as an MTEC fresher, even the packages are different. By the time you reach the MTech package, it's already three to four years. So it's better you do MTech and then go over there. Okay. It's a risky thing. It depends on, uh, not in Intel, I'm not telling about Intel specific. Now I will talk industry specific. Because if you are um, joining any company uh, as a BTech fresher, um, I would say the salary ranges are okay according to the BTEC level. But they also, they expect that you should have knowledge of VLSI flow, Perl, Python, Tickle. If you know Perl, Python, Tickle, you are in. Yes. So it is like that. But ma'am, mostly, but then, mostly uh, freshers are focused on preparing subjects like digital, analog, CMOS, and the ASIC flow if they are into 3D. And uh, we see that uh, Perl and Tickle are very important. So how uh, can we... Uh, See, um, let's say you have the knowledge of um, all the digital side, except the programming skill. Fine, everything is fine. But they will ask you to write a code in the interview. What will you do? Programming now, skill here means uh, very long. Programming skill. No. Uh, Perl Python That's... Tickle. Okay, got it. PPT. <laughs> Perl Python Tickle. Now... What if like you have an average knowledge of uh, average knowledge of your electronics? Yes. Okay. See most average knowledge. But you have a very knowledge. We are very skilled in your Perl Python tickle. Yes, ma'am. Let's say Python. They'll hire you immediately because automation is something that is running the industry. True. Automation saves your time, saves a lot of headache, and there's less manual intervention. So the work is done correctly. So my focus or my advice to the BTEC who are trying to get their hands in VLSI is 
skill be so skilled in your programming languages that the interviewer would never say no to you yes you are hired because you have like the because they will judge you or they will try to interview on those basics basics of uh, digital electronics is like then everybody know sub everybody you know read and everybody gives the same answer but yes. if you are been asked if there are five people and they are been asked to write a program in pola python article you will get five different codes yes correct yes that's the difference that is where you will stand out stand out given how so efficient our uh, coding methodology is exactly not efficient let's say five out of five people two people are only two or the people who will be knowing it nicely and will be writing it correctly so those two will go ahead like okay. that Okay, got it. So apart from the core subjects, uh, knowledge of Perl and Python is also important. Python, I will say Perl, Python, Tickle. Uh, if you want to enter in VLSI, Perl, Python, Tickle. That's it. Got it. Wow. Basic coding. I also don't know much, but when I was hired as in, uh, when I was doing IP to SOC, right? Yes, I did a lot of automation in Perl. Okay. I was good in Perl, not in Tickle. But I was good in Perl. I could write. At okay. least I could read. Like if somebody yes, has right. written a code in any of the programming language, you should be able to at least understand, okay, this is happening. Now the file is being opening. File is being called. Now what it is trying to see in the file? Look into file. Create from the file. Basic. Yes. But, but uh, the amount of skill that is required for a BTEC fresher will be much more expected than an MTEC fresher. You understand the gap, right? Uh, yes, ma'am. BTEC is continuous for years. Yeah. Correct. And uh, over to that, uh, you don't have the um, efficiency and uh, and the uh, exposure that an MTEC fresher has. So MTEC is like very focused. BTEC mm -hmm. is like everything is there. So that's why MTEC is important. Like you go, you do narrow it, right? The more you narrow it, more focus your uh, path is and more focus your uh, your aim is. Yes, ma'am. So it's about uh, choosing what interests us uh, ahead. So on this, uh, like uh, how would you advise to choose uh, our career? For example, as you told that you also didn't know how what you wanted to while in BTEC. So what would your advice be in uh, to current VTA graduates who are looking to decide their career option? And, uh, and if in VLSI, how to choose the domain, whether to go for analog uh, or digital and other domains? Um, see, first question, uh, if you are a BTEC fresher and you are not aware what you want to do, okay, I will first answer that question. Sure. Uh, let's say you are in a uh, stream right now you are in electronics we'll take your example you are in an electronics engineer and uh, you you know uh, what is going in and around okay first thing I always tell people is go and search what are the companies that work in electronics Snyder then uh, automo automation automobile companies they like they need engineers electronics engineer yes. then government companies right yes. so you have two options you prepare for gate mm. uh, if you are confident enough <laughs> i am not a gate person but uh, if you are confident enough prepare for gate simple if you are yes. not confident enough and you want to do a job go mm. and search for all the companies who hire electronics engineer or which are the companies that are working in electronics mostly automation companies uh like lift automations or this automation so all of this they require electronics engineer once you uh, have shortlisted those companies visit their career website simple visit their career website everybody has a career website go try to see what are they seeking for there are always freshers. They always require freshers. Yes. Go and follow their LinkedIn page. 
once you have followed the LinkedIn LinkedIn page, try to uh, get contacts of HR. So that is how you can find a job in your own stream if you are not aware or if you are not uh, knowing how to do that. Second, if you want to do a career in VLSI after BTEC, okay, I would not suggest that because um, it is a time taken skill. Okay. Um, so my my uh, role will be or my suggestion will be pre start preparing for MTech in VLSI. Go and search which are the universities which are offering good MTech in VLSI and go through their uh, placement records. Yes. You can always get it. Go through their curriculum. Is it aligning? You won't understand first, but you can always, nowadays LinkedIn is there. You can always connect to any of the, uh, you know, person who is into, in, into industry and ask them, so this is what I want to do. How do I do it? Yes. So go them, ask them, talk to them. This is what the industry is offering or this is what the university is offering right now, the subjects. Are they valid? Fine. Yes. Run with it. Start preparing for the exams. Fun is great. And second is there are always private university exams also. Like VIT is private university. So it always has its own exam. Yes, Go see what is their hiring procedure or what is their qualification procedure, how much rank you need and try to move in that direction. This is what I did. Because after two years of doing job, it was very difficult for me to prepare for all these subjects. You know, Kate subjects are very difficult. So I was doing that, but at the meantime, I was also do searching for all of this. So there are government colleges, there are private colleges as well. You can prepare for everything. Now, if even you don't want to do all of this, okay. So uh, the third thing is use air beat pressure. You want to be into VLSI and now what to do. So my first thing first is you do a course in Perl Python Tickle. Mm. Get certified. Yes, Simple. Get certified. Make your LinkedIn visible. Yes, Make your resume visible. Make your resume such that, that it should look that you are interested into VLSI. Now, there are few companies who are hiring BTEC, but they are mostly uh, trying for computer electronics because computer and uh, science, computer and science, you know, engineering field, they have uh, Perl Python tickle. That's the reason they go for hiring for those people in BTEC. That's how you can enter. Or uh, you can do a course. There are some VLSI courses, but you have to build a network in BTEC. Uh, on pressure, this if network, you... network thing, ma'am, uh, recently uh, post recession hiring has been very strict. And uh, so, in that, what would your advice be on using uh, LinkedIn? Especially MTech freshers, they are having a tough time looking for jobs. So, how can yes, we leverage exactly. LinkedIn? Yeah, I am. Um, I have leveraged it like the most. <laughs> but see, there is no harm reaching any HR. Okay, you have to be bold enough. You don't. You even I even when I was CPM or when I was laid off or even when I did not had an, a full time opportunity. Uh, there is one thing is like you have to. You have to think like okay, what 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 can happen. Nothing worse can happen, right? You're just reaching out an HR. You're trying to build your contact. You're trying to build your connection. And you're reaching an HR because you are interested to know. You are, you want to be, uh, you know, want yes. to get that opportunity. Even though you are not from tier one college. I never did engineering, BTEC engineering from tier one college. I did not even do, uh, uh, let's say, my MTech from a tier one college. Mine is still tier two, tier three, not even two. Tier is tier one is IIT, tier two is NITs, and tier three are private colleges. But still, I'm here, right? It's because of the consistency and resilience that yes, I want it. And in order to I want it, I have to leave everything. That okay, what will the HR think? What will the candidate think? Or what will this person will think? No, reach out to them. It's okay. Yes, they are not going to remember you. Yes, On that the resilience. Uh, on that resilience thing, uh, usually uh, people uh, approach uh, recruiters and people in the industry, but they don't get replies. So uh, what would uh, your advice be? See, um, that is there. That is so there. You have to still try to find, uh, uh, you know, still have to reach out. You know, they might not respond to you right now, but later they will. 
when the market is open right they need people that's the thing you cannot so, do oh, we need to keep the hope alive and uh, revisit that exactly messages. exactly you would never have to you know uh, see fight it even i fought it i fought it twice once for my full time and next time was when i was laid off five months i had no job so now i have it i know the worth and it's worth the struggle okay i will not quote that those who are getting you know uh, directly uh, into everything like most of my friends you know they got a uh, full time offer quickly they were not laid off even they were laid off they got the offer very quickly the all the five fingers are not same but every finger has its own significance so you have your own significance in your life and that is what you are building up for yourself not for others yes. so work towards it it is difficult it's fine it has to be difficult because if it's not difficult and if it's only coming to you directly you will never uh, you know never know the worth of it yes ma'am and once it's it interesting correct 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 and once it comes to you 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 hold it because you know the value of it and yes. you are very much grounded that is something i learned so uh, recognizing our significance and uh, tre- uh, treating it as a strength and using it while looking for jobs uh, is really important i think exactly correct 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 and no matter uh, whatever happens you always have to keep trying yes ma'am that's it keep trying yes. keep trying keep trying we keep reaching out yes ma'am Yes, ma'am. So, uh, I believe we are just on the brink of time, and uh, it was a really nice conversation exploring your journey. We usually see that you are placed in Intel and five-year experience, but there was a lot of uh, ups and downs in the process. And that ups <laughs> yeah, and downs, I'm yeah. sure that uh, it would have benefited our uh, viewers uh, a lot because uh, the Correct. recession is something that we all are facing right now, and hopefully, yes. this video can uh, serve. that purpose of addressing their uh, yes helping. yes i would be i would be very happy if anybody you know is going through this phase currently you know just keep up your hope keep fighting keep waking up every day you wake up you should feel that okay you want to reach 10 hrs today out of 5 yes, when they do not reply i don't mind <laughs> like that yes ma'am so keeping the hope alive and fighting spirit is very important exactly exactly yeah yes. correct so uh, so thank you ma'am thank you for your time uh, for here at vlsi for all it was really nice oh, to talk to you thank you so much and thank i you. hope that this will serve the greater good yes yes i just hope and i cross my fingers and i wish all the best for all the subscribers or all the users who will be listening to this please uh, you know reach out to me anytime if you feel anything anything you want to discuss okay yes, so guys we'll be sharing her profile in the description so you can uh, check out and reach her out in on linkedin okay guys so yes. uh, thank you ma'am uh, thank you ma'am that thank was you. Uh, all from vita sai for all so yeah thank, thank you, you so much thank you okay ma'am bye 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 ma'am